So the Song of Songs is often a, a somewhat uncomfortable gospel to, to uh, or reading to, to preach about because it delves into things that are uh, maybe a little uncomfortable, a little, little kind of awkward because it delves into uh, attraction. So this, um, uh, the bride says, on my bed at night, I sought him whom my heart loves. Okay, so, and this idea then of, of the beloved and, and the, the bride kind of, they, they meet and they converse and then they're separated and they're searching for each other again and they meet and they converse and they share time together and then they're separated again and there's, there's this constant, kind of constant waves and tides, if you will, of longing and desire and then unity and then separation. It's a, it's a very interesting uh, a very interesting book in scripture. But there's one thing which uh, I didn't notice, I, I hadn't heard until very, very recently, that the, the word in Hebrew for my beloved, right, so the, the one whom my heart loves, right, she, the, the bride often refers to him as my beloved or the one whom my heart loves. The, the word for that is the same as the word for friend, friend. And that, that, was, that, was, that was an interesting one for me because uh, I think today the, the idea of friendship, the idea of true friendship is very much either misunderstood or just entirely non-existent, entirely absent. Friendship, what does friendship mean? I think things have changed a lot due to technology and things, but I remember when I was younger, uh, neighborhoods, neighbors meant an awful lot more to people. I remember like when, when, when I was a kid, so about 35-ish years ago, not all farmers would have had all the, the tools that they needed. So we had a mower and our friend had a, a hay turner, so he'd cut his hay with our mower and we'd borrow his hay turner then to turn out. Anyway, we, we, shared, we shared tools, we shared things all the time. Uh, time of funerals, and this is, I think is still the case, hopefully, uh, in, especially in rural Ireland, where uh, if there's a bereavement, there's a funeral, a lot of the neighbours will, will come around maybe for two, three, four weeks with meals. They'll you know, have a cooked chicken and some spuds because the family are, you know, they're busy with oh, everything, you know, the funeral arrangements and the family coming and going and that. So neighbours will bring over meals. It's just such be- such, I think that's such a fantastic thing to do, such a beautiful tradition. I, I really hope it's still going. Uh, I think about my neighbour up the hill at home who has such a real interest. Now, it's, it's not a gossip interest at all, but a real interest in, in the family. You know, where's Norma these days? Is she married? And how are the kids? And are they, are, have they started school yet? And how are they finding school? And then, oh, I, I remember now four years ago, yeah, when, when little, was it Katie? Was it Katie when she, was, when she had, you know, broke her ankle? And just a real interest in your family. And then, you know, and she'll equally share everything about her family. Just people who are just neighbours and friends, they, they, they care. They care. These days, I'm not sure, I, I think friendship has kind of taken a turn for the worst, probably because so much of our interaction is, is virtual. So much of it is screen-based that the, the necessary step from acquaintance to, to friend doesn't necessarily really happen. I remember like when I was in college, I, we, I used to enjoy the whole social life thing. And uh, especially when I moved to Cork, uh, I was part of the arts faculty. So like, there were, what, 300 or something in my year. It was huge. And you get to know loads of people. And when you go out, there are loads of people that you can go out socialising with and drinking with and partying with and all that kind of thing. Great. How many am I in touch with now? None. <laughs> Not one. Not one. Uh, from school, um, we had a good bunch of friends, and, and uh, four of us particularly, who, who would have been... a, a Thick as thieves at the time, we're still in touch. Uh, I baptise most of their kids and all that sort of thing, so it's, it's, it's very nice. Uh, but, but friendship, I think friendship is, 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 is misunderstood or outright just devalued. I'm not sure if it's, if it's seen as a, a even kind of possible in the way that God understands it. In the way that God understands it. Because I think God's understanding of friendship is far higher or far more than what we think it is. I think maybe in, in our understanding of friendship, yeah, we, we hang out, we do a bit of work together, we share interests, we both like football, um, and that's, that's kind of it. And, and we think that maybe that's, that's, as, that's as good as it gets. I don't think that's God's understanding of friendship at all. I think in God's understanding, friendship is far, 
far deeper. I think in God's understanding, friendship goes even deeper than the intimacy that one experiences in marriage. Because the kind of loving relationships that we will have with everyone in heaven are closer to much to, to, to very deep friendship as opposed to physical intimacy. In heaven, we will love everyone. Everyone. So if you're married, I mean, you, you'll know who your wife is in heaven, but you will also love everyone else. You, you, we, we will be completely immersed in love, but it's not a, a physically intimate love. So it's a, it's a love of friendship. And it's such a beautiful thing when you see in older couples when, when one passes away, and it can be very, uh, very saddening, of course, but what a, a, a compliment or what a testament to their relationship when Granny will say of Granddad, he was my best friend. I just think that's the, like that, I, I, I well, every time I hear that, I well up. Like, it's just, I think it's the most beautiful compliment you can pay to anyone, as opposed to, he was, a, he, he was an honest man, that's nice. He was a great dancer, wonderful. It's so sad, actually, when all they can say is, you know, he loved his golf. Okay, <laughs> is that it? Is that it? But when they say, he was my best friend. Because at that age, like, the whole physical thing, that's, that's past. The, the, so what, what, what's, what's there now? What, 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 what's the driving force behind our relationship? Well, surely it should be profound friendship. And I'm saying all this in, in the context of, of the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene, who, and this is where, again, you can see the world finds it difficult to understand friendship, profound, deep friendship, as, as it should be. Even there was that stupid movie a couple, uh, a couple of decades back, The Last Temptation of Jesus, where he falls for, for Mary Magdalene, and I'm not sure if she, I can't remember if she was kind of interested in him, but it was all a big stupid made-up movie anyway. Uh, but again, that inability to understand, I can have a loving, profound friendship with Jesus without physical erotic desire. You know, you can have, you can have real profound friendship. A person that you look forward to seeing, a person who helps you get closer to God without the other side of it, you know, the intimacy side. Friend, you know, you, you can have it even between men and women. You can have profound friendship without that kind of intimate desire. It's, it, not only is it possible, I think it's what we're called to because that's what heaven will be like. That's what the, that's the, they're the kind of relations we'll have in heaven, that you have a profound love for people without physical intimacy. And, and, and this, I think, is, is something that God wants to renew in us, in priests, in also amongst the, the Catholic community in general. It's something that we, we strive to, to instill in our young people here in Holy Family as well, which, again, it can be difficult, of course, that when they're here for the year, that, yes, they, they should become good friends, but to know where the line is as well. Now, obviously, in time or after this year, if a relationship ensues, fantastic. You know, they, but, but respect the, the period of friendship first. Respect that, 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 that season of friendship where we, we grow in knowledge and, and loving service of the other, as opposed to, I find you attractive, do you want to go out for a drink? Like, let, let's grow in, in friendship, in loving service first. And there's, there's such a, a blessing in that too. I was listening to a talk recently from a very good American speaker called uh, Sister um, Miriam, uh, uh, no, the other one, Miriam J. Highland. What's her first name? Miriam James Highland, yeah. And she said, um, she was just giving a, a talk about intimacy with the Lord. And she said that friendship should be a very profound form of love. And again, just when I heard that, I went, yeah, that's, that, that's it, like, that's it. Friendship should be a very profound form of love. So it's not like that you have acquaintance, uh, friendship, and then love. It, it, should, it should be acquaintance, business partner, whatever it is, and then friendship and and love, or maybe even love, and then even friendship. Friendship goes even higher. Imagine, like, having, considering friendship more or, or closer, more, 
intimate, if I can use that word, without the physical aspect, of course, more intimate than, than the relationship I have with, with, with my wife or, or, or that, that friendship is actually even more. Because again, what kind of a relationship am I, will we have in heaven? Friendship. What kind of a relationship will I have with God? It's, I no longer call you servants. I call you friends, Jesus says. I call you friends. This is, this is what Jesus refers to us as. It's, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful reality. And something which I think, well, two aspects of friendship. Number one, I think friendship is based on, on, on trust. That a, 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 a friendship will ensue when, when I trust the other person, when I believe the other person. Very hard to either love or be friends with a person you can't fully trust. Um, you'll respect them and that, but they'll they'll be kind of be kept at arm's length, and that's that's no one's fault. You're you're still you're st you love them in a way, if you know what I mean. But like there there won't be that profound friendship, uh, not in the same way as 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 there will be with people who you can trust. And secondly, profound trust, sorry, profound friendship will come from uh, a loving relationship with the Lord, because no body, no person is perfect. So anybody who we're supposed to enter into a relationship with will be imperfect. Any friend that we have will be imperfect. So the grace of God then helps us to, to love despite disappointment, to love despite difficulty, to love maybe even despite rejection. To love, in, this can often happen in, in marriages and in family where there's uh, either your husband or wife or a family member who's just very, very difficult to love. It just can happen that at a certain point something changes in the marriage or in the relationship and and it becomes very, very challenging. Addiction or depression or something like that. And the person you once knew is now very, very different. The person you married seems to have changed quite a lot. So this is where the, the grace of God is absolutely necessary. <clears throat> the Lord calls us to friendship. Mary Magdalene understood what friendship with the Lord meant. And I think today she can teach us in, in a profound way what it means to, to long for the Lord, what it means to have a friendship with him, and also what it means to have a friendship with, with those around us. Have you seen him whom my heart loves? Scarcely had I passed them, then I found him whom my heart loves. May we discover a, an intimate friendship with the Lord. And may we rediscover the meaning of profound friendship with one another. Amen.